BBC Television presents... Hancock. Have you seen my screwdriver, Sid? Which one? The Phillips or the Flathead? Phillips and Flathead. I thought they were a double act. <laughs> you know my screwdriver. I didn't know you even owned one, Hancock. I thought you just hammered the screws in. <laughs> I'll have you know I come from a long line of carpenters, mate. Jesus was one of my ancestors, you know. <laughs> what do you think I used to make all those shelves? What flaming shelves? We haven't got any shelves. Well, you've never made any shelves, Sid. Not since I've been here anyway. But I have. Beavering away in my little shed. Well, where are they then? Stick them up. Stick them up, eh? You've said that before, haven't you? <laughs> no, in me shed they are. There's no point in putting them up until I've got something to stick on them now, is there? Well, I've got some books you can put on them. You don't read books? What have you ever read, Sid? War and Peace. <laughs> you could always put your old copies of The Sporting Life on them, I suppose. Oh, of course I've got books. I'm a bookmaker. Oh, yes, I forgot. All those scraps of bets and stuff written down. You can keep those at your betting office. I want to put more important things on them, like me trophies. What trophies? Well, I haven't won any yet, but I'm planning to. I'll have a whole shelf of them. You just wait. A few years back, I won a cup for the mile. No, 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 I just can't see it. Sid James ran a mile. Were the police after you or something? <laughs> or was it the egg cup for winning the East Cheam Egg and Spoon race? <laughs> I'll have you know it was for charity, Hancock. I collected a mile of pennies. <laughs> have you looked in your little shed for your screwdriver? Of course, there's bound to be one in there. I just thought you might have one hanging about, that's all. I'll let you win the Handyman of the Year awards, Hancock. Could you go and fetch it for me, Sid, while I hold this bit of wood against the wall? <laughs> There's a flaming geezer in the shed, Hancock. No, I don't want a geezer, thanks, Sid. Just a screwdriver, mate. <laughs> No, hang on, there's a fella in our shed. What's he doing there? He's probably stealing all my valuable tools. They're all antiques. My great-granddad left them. Some of the flint ones are quite old. <laughs> Pin him down while I call the police. That's trespass, and he might be tooled up. You never know. He's just outside. Shall I tell him to come in? No, knock him out until there's a couple of big burly policemen in here. We might need to taser him. <laughs> Uh, he's only a little bloke. I don't think he'll be causing us much trouble. You never can tell. It's always the little one, Sid. All right, but be it on your head. Uh, good evening. I like your shed. Oh, very cosy it is. You haven't got a big one, though. I can put all my stuff in it. Oh, go on. What do you mean, very cosy? What have you been doing in there? Oh, nothing. Why do you want to know? You haven't been peeking through the windows, have you? When I'm changing into my gym jams. I'll put curtains up where you are. You leave my windows alone. Why are you wearing gym jams? You're not sleeping in there, are you? Of course I am. What do you think I was doing? Building metal buses? My good man, who are you? And what do you do for a living? Are you a vagabond? Oh, no. Oh, not me. I'm Mr. Smith. I'm a teacher. I'm assistant headmaster. Well, you should know better than to break into people's sheds. Now up it, or I'll have to teach you a lesson you won't forget. Oh no, I can't go. I live there now. I'm really ill for you. You can have half my miserable teacher's salary. A shed's all I can afford. I don't want to rent it. Anyway, it's full of tools. No, it isn't. Oh, yes it is. No, it isn't, Hancock. <laughs> I've chucked them all out. They were getting in the way. Great lumps of flint they were. I had to get my bed in. It's a double. It's cardboard, it's walnut. You're the only flaming nut round here. Now, what have you done with my granddad's tools? They have sentimental value. <laughs> Don't worry, it's all right. I put them in the bin for safekeeping. Oh, they'll be all right in there till the bin men come, though. When are the bins collected, Sid? Yesterday. <laughs> now, look what you've done. That's 3,000 years of carpentry history, straight down to landfill. <laughs> Those were the tools Jesus used. 
I'll lend you one in a minute. If you don't start shouting at me, I'll call my social worker. She keeps an eye on me, stops me getting into any mischief. She knows how to deal with bullies like you. Come now, let's not be silly about this. I don't want any social workers nosing round here. Here's 50 quid. Now, clear off like a good boy and get yourself a room for the night. <laughs> You can't buy me, Mr. Engel. I've got my pride. I'm not just any old homeless person. I won't just sleep anywhere. I don't sleep around, you know. I'm very shit proud. Anyway, Mrs. Clutterbuck, she's coming round. She'll be here in a minute. <laughs> Oh, what seems to be the trouble, Mr. Smith? Is this man harassing you? He is, he is, Mrs. Clutterbuck. He says I can't sleep in his shed. He wants to cast me out on the streets like a piece of rubbish. There you are, an admission. I didn't even have to beat it out of him. <laughs> Take him away and stick him in a home or something. Make him comfy. Stick some pills in his tea and he won't want to come back here. No, he's staying right where he is, Mr. Hancock. He's got squatter's rights. Squatter's rights? It's a flaming garden shed, not some rubble-strewn terrace in the East End. You can't squat in a shed. The neighbours will start to talk. <laughs> I have got squatter's rights. I have to squat because if I get out too quickly in there, I'll bang the head. I'll have you know that Mr. Smith is a well-respected and experienced assistant headmaster. And due to the price of property, he can't afford his own place. But we need teachers, so he's staying put. The children love him, you know. Oh, it's true. I am. I'm very popular. I tell them fairy stories, like the one about the wicked witch who pokes children, and who has a gingerbread house about the size of a shed. And she looks like you, Mr. Hinkle. I bear no resemblance to a witch at all. How dare you? Then there's the one about an ogre who had a really big palace, and a teacher, a little man, who... <laughs> <laughs> we wanted him <laughs> in just one small corner, but the ogre wouldn't let him, and he started beating him and beating him, and no one would help him. <laughs> and no, and no one would help him. Don't worry, I'll help you, Mr. Smith. Has Mr. Hancock been beating you? Not yet, but he's threatened to. The violence is in the eyes. I've seen it before, you know. It's just waiting there. I'm afraid. Help me. That's it, Mr. Hancock. I'm calling the police. Now, let's all stay calm. There's no need to do that. He can stay. Anyway, it was Sid, my lodger, that threatened him, not me. Oh, I didn't. I said I'd protect you from him, if I needed to. So, you're a lodger, are you, Mr. James? Yes, that's right. And you pay rent, I suppose? Yep. No. Well, officially he's supposed to, but he never does. <laughs> Well, in that case, Mr. Hancock, you can have absolutely no objections to take Mr. Smith as a lodger. Yes, I do have objections. I don't mind seeing he's almost human. So what am I then? I don't know. A teacher. Oh, that's not very nice. Teachers are human as well, you know. We all need a cuddle. Well, you're not getting the cuddle off me, because my teachers weren't. I've had some bad experiences, I'll tell you. Triple mass homework, for example. My old mass teacher looks like you. Mr. Smith, you say? This is a hate crime against teachers, Mr. Hancock. I insist you take Mr. Smith as a lodger. And if I don't... I'll, I'll, I'll get number 23 railway cuttings, condemned as a fire hazard. You can't do that. I've done it before, Mr. Hancock. Who to? Mr. Smith here. <laughs> oh, it's true. Mrs. Clatterback can be very tough. But she's got a lot of gold. So that's how many sugars, Mr. Smith? You sure you didn't teach me at East Gym Comprehensive? I'll have the six same as usual. And please call me Sebastian. No, I'd recognise an ugly mug like yours. Egg sunny side up, Sebastian Smith. I'm sure it's you. Yes, cross country before maths. <laughs>